agriculture. It's the economic engine that drives this region. On this episode of Valley's Gold, we're spicing it up with the California dehydrated onion industry. From seed to seasoning, we'll savor it all. I hope you'll join me, Ryan Jacobson, on this flavorful adventure. Valley's Gold is produced through a partnership between the Fresno County Farm Bureau and Valley PBS. Production funding for Valley's Gold is provided by... Everyone enjoys getting together to laugh, to talk, and mostly to eat. It sounds so simple, but the reality is that it takes a lot of hard work to feed us. The next time you sit down to eat, remember to thank our farmers, Gar Tutelian Incorporated since 1949 at 800-696-6108. The Myers Water Bank and Wildlife Project, a water resource and education program, providing an educational experience that teaches students in the Central Valley about water and wildlife. For more than 60 years, Brandt has been a major supplier of agricultural specialty products. Formerly Monterey Ag Resources, Brandt provides sustainable solutions for both conventional and organic growers. Brandt, we're proud to call the Valley home. I'm in Western Fresno County to learn about dehydrated onions from the world's leading supplier of spices and vegetable ingredients, Olam. With me, I have Senior Vice President of Agricultural Operation, Dave Watkins, as well as Sustainability Coordinator, Alejandra Sanchez. Thank you for joining me too. Glad to be here. Thank, Thank you. you. Well, Dave, let me begin with you. What is Olam? Well, Olam is the world's largest supplier and producer of spices and vegetable ingredients. Our key products include black pepper, dehydrated onion and garlic, a variety of capsicum products. Capsicums are the world of peppers and we make everything from paprika to chili okay. powders. And then we're also a large tomato processor. In fact, we're the largest uh, processor of organic tomatoes in the world. Where exactly is Olam located? Well, we're a global business. But we are headquartered right here in Fresno, and that's because this is the agricultural capital of the world. It's the world's yeah. most productive uh, place to do business uh, from an agricultural standpoint. I know the company is very proud of their sustainability practices. Could you explain those? Well, OLM as a business, we, we are worried about climate change. We are uh, very concerned about the water situation in California. And we are doing our very best to make sure we maximize the efficiency of our agricultural operations and make sure that we don't leave any footprint that will subtract, subtract from our ability to do business long into the future. Absolutely. And Alejandro, I know this is your specialty here. So what does the company do for sustainable practices? Well, sustainability is, is very important to all of our business, for all of Olam. Uh, specifically for SVI, we're, we're really honing in on four key areas, so water, land, carbon, and livelihoods, and understanding the communities in which we operate in. And these are global initiatives that, you know, we're trying to be progressive in, and really focus on uh, our operations and understanding the threats to the business, both physical, regulatory, and, and reputational. But Really, it's when we bring it back to California, we want to show where our growers and agricultural practices of California are both progressive and sustainable and really can fit into this, the global trends of, of sustainability. And for example, when we're speaking about our growers and we're talking about grower relations, that's really what's a key 
part of our business to understand what their risks are and what their needs are. And that helps us be a solution driven partner. And one example of that is actually our 60 inch bed program. So with our 60 inch program, it allows, uh, for example, for our tomato growers to have dehydrated onions as a rotational crop. And a lot of our tomato growers are utilizing drip irrigation. And what we're trying to do is also convert our onions onto drip irrigation. Right now, 90% of our garlic is on drip and 80% of our tomato acreage is on drip wow. irrigation. Okay. So by them having a, a dehydrated onion as a crop rotation is very important, not only them for utilize their drip, but just to uh, have minimum passes, minimum tillage, be able to to keep the shapes of their beds and, and have a better crop rotation. Great. And Dave, we're in a perfect example of this. We're out in the field here with some dehydrated onions around us. What does it take to grow these things? Well, the, the first thing is we have to have the right seed. A dehydrator onion is very different than the one you cut up and put in your salad. It's uh, got very high soluble solids. It's very, very pungent. And when we dehydrate it, it yields a much higher uh, ratio of finished product from the raw. And so um, uh, that's uh, the most important economic driver in our business. And so we've been developing these onions for many, many years. And we feel that they are a tremendous source of competitive advantage in our business. How many months of the year do you source onions from the Central Valley here? Well, we uh, generally we source our earliest onions out of the Imperial Valley okay. in the desert, and that will start in early May, and we'll get to uh, the San Joaquin Valley by the middle of June, and we will stay here till the end of September. Wow. Yeah. And then we actually were fortunate enough to be out here during the harvest season, which is uh, mostly all mechanical. Could you explain that process? Uh, yeah, I can. It's um, uh, uh, something that we invented ourselves many years ago. We mechanized the harvest. We went from hand harvest uh, uh, many years ago. And it's really a three-step operation. After we've grown the onions, we come in and cut the water, let them dry down. Then we take the tops off with a rotary mower. Then we come through and dig them into the windrows, like you see in the background here. Then we come through with our, what we call a bulker, yeah. and we lift them up, separate the dirt and the defects from the onions, and send them to the plant. Well, fantastic. Well, you guys have been incredibly informative. I'm actually off to now see how you develop the seed for this operation. Fantastic. Thank you, Glad guys. Glad to show you. I've moved over to OLM's Hanford facility, and with me I have Larry Hansen, who is the Director of Agricultural Research and Development. Larry, thanks for joining me. Hey, thanks for being here. Well, first off, describe how'd you get into research and development? Well, you know, I uh, went to school at UC Davis, got a, uh, a degree in entomology, and uh, later another degree in uh, integrated pest management, and uh, went to work briefly at the uh, University of California. Ended up working for one of the uh, dehydration companies, and ended up here. Great, and how long have you been with Olam? Well, Olam technically since uh, 2010, but okay. uh, I started in the industry in the early 1980s. Got it, okay. Now we're here at the Hanford facility, which you're very involved with. What do you do here? Well, Hanford's our ag operations headquarters, and uh, my function though is involved in the uh, ag research and development group. We have a, a variety development program, as well as uh, seed production programs. Great, so when we talk varieties and seeds, I know you guys are doing a lot of that and it sounds like a pretty complicated process. What can you describe for me? Well, it is a very uh, uh, complicated process, extends throughout the year. Uh, the program itself, I guess we could start uh, with the initial planting. We do about 30 acres of uh, onions a year, okay. specifically for the research and development group. Okay. Uh, some of that is trials. They get planted in every uh, production area, usually multiple uh, maturities in those areas. Uh, the bulk of it, however, are what we call bulb increases. So we're planting out our parent material to grow bulbs, and those bulbs are brought back here and go through a selection process to find the elite bulbs that we can then use in the, uh, in the breeding program to make the improvement in the next generation. And I assume that's kind of what we have surrounding us right now is these... These, these, are, these are bulbs that are part way through the selection process, okay. right? The selection process actually starts in the field. They're mechanically harvested, so the smallest bulbs stay behind. They come here, they go through a grading uh, uh, belt, essentially, that drops out probably about half the onions based on size. Uh, go across some visual inspection to remove any obvious uh, defects in the onions. Uh, then come here in these crates, 
We then take these crates and run solids. We want the, to know what the dry matter content of the onion is. And from that, uh, before they go back out to produce seed in our breeding cages, uh, they get hand selected, essentially starting with the highest solids material, and uh, get dumped onto a table. And the breeders go through there, they cut the onions, they look at the uh, internal characteristics, and decide if that's the onion they want to go forward with. And you talked about the dry matter content. What exactly is that? Since it's the soluble solids, the, the sugars that's in the onion, although these are not simple sugars, they're not going to be sweet, <laughs> uh, but uh, they're the sugars in the onion. And, and so essentially, it's the parts of the onion that, that will be left if you got rid of all the water. That's, right. that's our end product, and so we want as much of that as possible. And you talked about cutting them open. What physically are you looking for in there? I mean, there, is there major differences between what you're... We look at the internal flesh color, okay. but we also look at how many centers, how many growing points there are in that onion. And okay. uh, uh, either we'd like either a single center, or at least if there's multiple centers, that they're very close to the center of the bowl. Great. And then when it comes to the actual, you know, when you start looking towards next year's crop, how do you do that development process to get that seed? Uh, well, the, the bulbs themselves, after they get graded, we select okay. out, again, the very elite material will go into, we have a research farm west of town, okay. where we'll plant those into cages, and cages are essentially netting that we put up to control pollination. Wow, okay. Uh, so those will produce seed. And so onions are actually pollinated by insects, bees? By insects. Okay. Uh, bees. Uh, in the cages, we use flies, because okay. bees will sting people. <laughs> but, uh, so we'll plant the uh, bulbs into uh, these cages to produce seed. Uh, that seed can be both breeding seed that's going to be used for our next cycle of selection. We also produce what we call uh, uh, hybrid seed cages. So we're making hybrids between different parent lines, and those hybrid seeds are the ones we plant in our trials to see how we're doing versus our current standard varieties. Okay. So the bulbs themselves get selected, uh, brought out there. Uh, they're grown then on the research farm for uh, over the course of the year, lots of different operations involved. At the end, we come in, hand harvest those flowers. Uh, let them dry, bring them back here, go through a, uh, essentially a hand uh, thrashing process, uh, a washing process to get out the clean seed. We inventory that and uh, use that then the next year for, again, trials and or further development work. Do you have an estimation for what one onion can produce as far as seed-wise? You know, there's probably, and the average onion has two to three hundred uh, flowers. There's some, wow. flowers <laughs> some flowers have more, some flowers have, have less, but the average flower stem, uh, and each of those flowers can produce uh, up to six seeds. So in theory, you could get 2,000 seeds. Uh, most likely, you're going to get a couple hundred. Got it. And when it comes to the commercial application, you're actually then going to take that seed and actually plant it into the ground, or do you do a transplant from a greenhouse? Commercially, it, they're direct seeded. Everything's direct seeded. Okay. And, and our seed, though, that comes out of the breeding uh, work, uh, the parent line seed we plant, uh, well, the elite bulbs produce the parent seed yeah. for further selection. The worst of the bulbs we throw away. The middle fraction we keep and we plant those bulbs to produce seed that we call stock seed. Okay. That stock seed gets planted to produce more bulbs <laughs> and those bulbs are planted to produce the actual production seed. Got it, okay. So a so, four year process to go so, from, from breeding to actual production seed is four years. Four year process. Right. Wow, okay. And then when it, actually when we go to the actual field to see that planted on the commercial application, um, how long does those take to germinate? I mean, we're we talking tiny seeds. I've never actually seen an onion seed. Yeah, there, uh, there's about 100,000 seeds a pound. Okay. So they're not, uh, they're not real big, uh, yeah. but bigger than some vegetable yeah. crops. And uh, you plant those in the ground. The germination time all depends on the, uh, the temperature. So if it's in very good temperatures, those should be all up and growing, you know, 10 days or so. But in the field, it often takes a little bit longer. So particularly when we're planting in the wintertime, which we do part of the year. Exactly. Well, Larry, this has been fascinating. I learned a whole lot more about seed research that I'd never have seen before. So I thank you for showing me around this place. Thank you. Appreciate it. Headed over to Fireball to learn about processing. With me, I have Senior Vice President of Manufacturing, Mike Smith. Mike, thanks for joining me. Welcome to Fireball. Well, let me begin with, how'd you get started in the industry? Actually, I was transferred out to California about 26 years ago into the food industry, and I've been part of the onion and garlic and vegetable dehydration industry ever since. This is a phenomenal facility we have here. What does it take to process onions? 
It's a fairly complex process. Uh, all starts with the raw material coming in. Uh, we bring onions in in trailers, uh, unload them, uh, remove the dirt and any foreign material that might be in them, wash them thoroughly, and then begin with the uh, presenting those into our dehydrators, first with slicing the onions very thinly, to okay. about one-tenth of an inch. Wow. <laughs> and then uh, placing the, the onions on a, on a continuous belt dryer where we use gas-fired air and actually blow it up through the bed of the onions and leave it in that process for about five hours. Okay. It's actually a very quick process then. Quick, it's continuous, so it runs yeah. 24 hours a day. We wow. run almost 150 days a year here. Okay. Um, and then we'll take it uh, at the end of the dryer, we'll pull it out, um, run it through our mill, which will remove further defects and also separate the onion into five different streams based on size. Based on, purely off the size? Yes. Okay. And then what, how does the product end up as far as when it leaves this processing facility? Uh, at the end of that process, it'll go into fiber drums and we'll do a lot of quality testing on it. We'll put it away and then as a customer orders product, we'll bring it back and package it into uh, a bag in a box configuration or craft bag. I know quality is very important to Olam. What does it take to make a quality onion product? A lot of it starts in the field and our raw material of a high quality product that we're processing at the, at the optimal time. And then maintaining sanitary conditions throughout the facility, as well as doing multiple quality tests throughout the day and, and then after production is completed. And Mike, food safety is such a big issue. Traceability, what do you have to do to comply with that? We have many systems to comply with that. We'll actually track the product all the way from the field through the finished product into any country we ship into, up to 70 countries today. Wow. Uh, we'll do that with our ERP systems and allow, uh, through, through various transactions, we'll track each individual lot of onion as it goes through the process and know exactly where it, where it came from. Mike, one of the important parts of the operation, nothing goes to waste. There is a usable byproduct. That's right. After we're done processing, all of our waste product gets uh, sold for animal feed in the, in the region. Great. I know cogeneration is also an important aspect of this operation. That's right. Our facility here, we actually generate electricity by burning natural gas and use the latent heat in that process to fire our dryers. And most importantly, where do these products end up? We actually ship these products to over 70 countries around the world um, in various forms, either in terms of uh, packaged product or bulk product. Great. Well, Mike, thank you so much. This has been very informative, and I can't wait to actually go sample some of these products. Fantastic. <laughs> thank you. I'm finishing my OLAM visit at their global headquarters in Fresno. With me, I have their Vice President of Innovation and Quality, Siva Sibaranian. Thanks for joining me, Siva. Thank you, and glad to meet you, and welcome to OLAM's IQ Center. Thank you so much. Well, let me begin with Vice President of Innovation and Quality. How did you get that position? Well, it's been a long journey. <laughs> uh, I've, uh, I was qualified in food science, chemistry, and chemical engineering. Okay. And when Olam set up the business back in the Central Valley in California, one of the most important things that they wanted to do was to ensure that the technical knowledge that is required for the business was housed in the Central Valley. Got it. Okay. And that's how I came to be the vice president of uh, this business. Well, that's fantastic. Well, first, tell me a little bit about this building. You've got some really neat things that are going on here. So in this uh, innovation and quality center, uh, we have a comprehensive combination of all our products and the science behind the products are actually practiced in the Innovation and Quality Center. So we have a team of 15 scientists uh, in, who practice food technology, food chemistry, food microbiology and culinary combinations to create and measure products. We got to see, we went out and saw seed development, we saw them grown in the field, we saw how they were processed, but none of that matters if nobody will eat it, and that's what you're here to ensure. So our job here is to add value and to create the taste and spice up the <laughs> portfolio. So well, that's, that's our And goal. that's incredibly important. And I saw a bunch of labs here. What do you do in the labs? So the product development laboratory, the product development kitchen that we have here, basically is a laboratory where we create products. Okay. So when we create products, we take the onions, we take the garlic, we take the tomatoes, we take the spices, 
that we process into finished products which eventually land up in every supermarket shelf. Great. Alongside with the product development, it is very important to be able to measure the quality and product characteristics that becomes functional in defining what a product is. So that is measured using both chemistry and microbiology and that is what our scientists practice on a day-to-day -day basis. Got it, okay. Well, all that science comes together, as you said, in this food laboratory we have behind us and you got some phenomenal samples for us to try here. Let's begin with what we have here. My pleasure. So uh, this is a simple salsa that you find in the supermarket shelves in various forms. This has got a combination of tomatoes, onions, garlic, cilantro, and various spices. This is actually a fruit salsa, which a also- A fruit salsa. Yes, which <laughs> has got peaches and mangoes in it. Okay. And here we have some fire roasted salsa. So these are various combinations where we basically use all our ingredients, whether it is from the onion business, whether it's from the garlic business, eventually all the products from Central Valley combine to create value in products here. And you're tweaking this, I mean, I assume you're looking for obviously taste being number one, but you're probably looking for shelf life and some other important qualities as well. Yes. So we first eat with our eyes. <laughs> so color is one of the most important functional properties of any food. So we start with color. We then go to taste, we then go to aroma, and then all the characteristics of viscosity and flow properties and particle size and particulateness of the product, as well as microbiology of products so that it is shelf stable and it reaches the consumer in the intended quality that the consumer can use it in their kitchen. Exactly, okay. Well, let's continue on here. This is neat. I have no clue what it is though. So this is, this is actually tomato paste, okay. which is uh, created from tomatoes that the Central Valley grows uh, for the whole world, literally. Correct, exactly. So this is actually a hot break tomato paste here. You can see that this is slightly uh, lighter in color, and this is a cold break tomato paste where we have processed the tomato paste with lower temperatures so that it's a brighter in color. So this lands up in a ketchup, you can see it is thick, okay. and this lands up in a pasta sauce, you can oh, see okay. that That's it the is difference there. bright red. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Okay, great. And Siva, as you mentioned, we do produce a lion's share of the country's processing tomatoes here. What is the difference between processing tomatoes and fresh tomatoes? Processing tomatoes are specially bred for creating value-added products, whether it is going into a can as particulate or whether it is going in as a tomato paste. The products that are processed from processing tomatoes are packaged in an aseptic manner so that products are available throughout the year and they are shelf stable throughout the year. And you're able to capture that nutrition, that fresh nutrition and hold it for a longer shelf life. Absolutely. So for example, if you see the redness of these products, you can really almost see the lycopene yeah. in here. And lycopene is the most important ingredient within tomatoes, which is basically anti-inflammatory and it's also got significant cardiovascular properties. So lycopene is something which we are trying to preserve in the product as we do the processing, and hence the color of the tomato paste is indication of how much lycopene it contains. And it gives you that bright, vibrant red we're seeing here. Yes. And let's move on here as we... So here is actually um, a pasta sauce which is actually created from fresh tomatoes during this season. Okay. And this is actually an example of how we actually combine uh, onion, tomatoes, onion, garlic, basil, uh, every other spice that we want in, in to go into a pasta sauce. And this is created from the fresh produce during this year. This year. So, yes. And that will be shipped to stores that will actually be able to... Yeah, this will end up in a bottle like this okay. and then it will be going to various supermarkets with various brands. Absolutely. And that's one thing that's important when we talk OLAM. You said the brand behind the brands. I mean, yes. you guys are just have a little bit everywhere. And so on a daily basis, there's a good chance we're eating something that Absolutely. may have started here in this kitchen. Absolutely. And we have many like that in the supermarket shelf. And I know you guys are a major investor in the new Jordan Research Facility at Fresno State. So that's going to be a great cooperative project, I'm sure, that leads to successful students coming into businesses like this. That is a new, brand new investment that OLAM has committed uh, with Fresno State. Uh, and the Jordan Research Center is putting up a brand new research facility for sensory evaluation. And OLAM has partnered with Fresno State in creating that sensory laboratory. Now the sensory laboratory at Fresno State and the combination of IQ with an OLAM will be a great opportunity to measure 
the chemistry of products and link it back to sensory evaluation. And that's our aim to promote that science within the valley of our products from the valley. Great. Well, Siva, this has been a very fun stop. I just cannot believe what's taking place here in the middle of Fresno and just the awesome things you're doing in this laboratory. So thank you for showing me around. Thank you very much for coming by and our pleasure. Great. And I hope all of you will join me next time for more Valley's Gold. Production funding for Valley's Gold is provided by. Everyone enjoys getting together to laugh, to talk, and mostly to eat. It sounds so simple, but the reality is that it takes a lot of hard work to feed us. The next time you sit down to eat, remember to thank our farmers, Gar Tutelian Incorporated since 1949 at 800-696-6108. The Myers Water Bank and Wildlife Project a water resource and education program, providing an educational experience that teaches students in the Central Valley about water and wildlife. For more than 60 years, Brandt has been a major supplier of agricultural specialty products. Formerly Monterey Ag Resources, Brandt provides sustainable solutions for both conventional and organic growers. Brandt, we're proud to call the Valley home.